Georgia Tech football has not been good for a while, especially since Paul Johnson decided to retire and the program chose to move away from the triple option offense to more of a modern style offense. They had some special seasons, even making it and winning the Orange Bowl in 2014 and a 9-4 record in 2016, but those were the last flashes of success the Yellow Jackets have had and both came under Johnson's tenure. That was until this season, when Brent Key found a way to lead Georgia Tech back to a bowl game. This is the story of the revival of Georgia Tech football. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Plan to release a video every day from now until Christmas. Also, let me know what team you want me to talk about in the new year in the comments section below. When Paul Johnson decided to retire after the 2018 season, they were coming off a bowl game loss to Minnesota 34-10 in the Quick Lane Bowl. The program was on an up and down roller coaster since their Orange Bowl win in 2014, and it felt it was time to move away from the triple option offense. Under Johnson, the program went 82-59 and won the 2009 ACC Championship. Names linked to the job included Neil Brown at Troy, Jeff Collins at Temple, Tony Elliott at Clemson, and Willie Fritz at Tulane, among others. Collins had served as the defensive coordinator at both Florida and Mississippi State before taking the head coaching job at Temple after Matt Rule left to take the Baylor job. Collins found success at Temple, leading them to back-to-back -back bowl games with a 7-6 and 8-4 and 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 record, but he was not the flashiest of hires at Georgia Tech, but was still named the next Georgia Tech head coach. According to the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, he was seen as an energetic and innovative guy who had a reputation as a strong recruiter. He helped the Yellow Jackets bring in a strong 2006 recruiting class, including the likes of Derek Morgan, Jonathan Dwyer, among others, when he served as Georgia Tech's recruiting coordinator. Another member of the class, Roddy Jones, called Collins ahead of the curve in recent interviews with the AJC. With the move away from the triple option offense, Tech was going to need a strong recruiting head coach and they were going to need to endure a few tough years under him. But if they did, they could be in for something special in Atlanta. At least that was the dream for the Georgia native and the rest of the Tech fan base. Many in the industry felt like Collins was going to be a home run hire. But this is college football and it can be fickle sometimes. Collins jumped right into recruiting, getting involved in social media campaigns and tried to raise the branding name of Tech. He talked about business opportunities for players and wanted to make Tech fun and relevant again. As expected, the first season under Collins did not go well as they went 3-9 and nine and finished last in the Coastal. Yet there was still hope. A shortened 2020 season saw the Yellow Jackets go 3-7 and seven before another 3-9 and nine season in 2021. The team was struggling and showing no signs of improvement during its first three seasons. Heading into the 2022 season, Collins was viewed as a candidate on the hot seat, with a 1-3 start to start the year, which saw them get blown out 41-10 in number 4 Clemson, 42-0 to number 17 Old Miss, and 27-10 to UCF. Collins was fired. According to the Athlon Sports, as early as that Sunday, confirmed reports broke that Collins and athletic director Todd Stansberry were let go, but no one officially notified the parties until a full day later, a blunder in communication between the university and the athletic department. Collins failed to take control of Atlanta when it came to recruiting and the school's image continued to be viewed as an outsider for the city. He could never get the university's support, nor could he get the fan base and students to rally around them either. The Athlon Stephen Godfrey wrote after firing, the failure of the Collins era communicates that tech is a place where extreme pragmatism is the rule of law. You won't see another Instagram campaign coming out of there for a long time. Assistant head coach Brent Key was named interim head coach with the Collins firing. Key was born in Alabama but played at Georgia Tech as a right guard. After graduating from Tech, he became a graduate assistant before becoming the running backs and tight ends coach at Western Carolina. He then spent the next decade at UCF in different positions before becoming the offensive line coach at Alabama. He returned to Tech under Collins in 2019. The weird thing is, after Collins firing, Georgia Tech started winning. Right after Key was named interim head coach, he knew exactly what he needed to do. Georgia Tech had allowed four punts to be blocked to start the season, and protection was consistently bad. If they wanted to start winning, that was going to need to change. That week against defending ACC champions Pitt, they did not allow a single blocked punt and went on to stun the Panthers 26-21 to win their first game over an FBS opponent in over a year. 
the next week against Duke, they did not allow any blocked punts again and won in overtime 23-20 to to win consecutive games for the first time since 2018. Key's philosophy was not anything flashy. It was focused around doing the basic things right. Did they win those games because they did not allow any blocked punts? No, but it avoided them from giving up momentum shifting plays and they fixed a fatal flaw on the team at the time. According to the Athletics' Andy Staples, while Key and everyone else remained complimentary of Collins, it's clear finer details were getting missed. The reason Key chose Seymour for the task of overhauling that group is that Seymour is a ball coach. When it came to getting the basics right, Key thought back to what he learned from former boss Nick Saban as well as former coach and mentor George O'Leary. Collins' biggest mistake might have been trying to brand the program before he could develop a brand on the field. Key doesn't seem the least bit concerned about the outside perception of the program. They would lose to both Virginia 16-9 and Florida State 41-16 before beating Virginia Tech in Blacksburg 28-27. They followed that up with a loss to Miami before upsetting number 13 North Carolina in Chapel Hill, 21-17. They then traveled to Athens to take on Georgia, who had beaten Collins by a combined score of 97-7 in their previous two matchups. This game would be much closer as Georgia Tech only found themselves down 10-7 at half to the eventual national champions. Unfortunately, Georgia would pull away in the second half to win 37-14, but it was a much closer game than it had been in years. At the time, Key was still only the interim head coach. Guys being talked about as Collins' replacement include the likes of Jamie Chadwell, Willie Fritz, Charles Huff, Tom Herman, and Jeff Lebby, among others. Yet Georgia Tech chose to retain Key as their head coach, making the former alum their leading man. Entering the 2023 season, expectations for Georgia Tech were for them to finally make it back to a bowl game for the first time since 2018. They were coming off a 5-7 season, and hope was almost restored back into the program. They are expecting to have a much better offense with a system that would utilize Texas A&M quarterback transfer Haynes King, a big get for Tech at the time, and quarterback Zach Pyron returning as his backup. They returned four starters on the offensive line and looked to have a better run game this season. On defense, they added Braylon Oliver from Minnesota and Andre White from Texas A&M. They had all the tools to be better than 3-9 this season. They lost their first game of the season in a tough battle against Louisville 39-34 at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, but rebounded with a win over South Carolina State. They then lost to Ole Miss 48-23 before rebounding with a win over Wake Forest 30-16. But then came the game that set the alarm bells off for fans. Georgia Tech would lose to Bowling Green, and some in the fan base started turning on key, saying they should have hired a bigger name head coach. The following week, they beat Miami in dramatic fashion before losing to Boston College. They then upset number 17 North Carolina 46-42 and Virginia 45-17 and just needed one more win for bowl eligibility. After a loss to Clemson, they beat Syracuse to become bowl eligible for the first time since 2018 and went into their matchup against Georgia hoping to ruin the Bulldogs' season. Tech tried to mount a comeback in the end, but in the end it would not be enough as they would fall 31-23, the closest matchup in years between the two teams. They finished the year this week taking on UCF in the Gasparilla Bowl and came back from a 17-0 deficit to win 30-17. Georgia Tech had their most successful season since 2018 and seemed to be on the right track for once. Brent Key is 11-10 as head coach, already having more wins than Collins did in his time as Tech's head coach. But can they keep the momentum going? Only time will tell. What do you think? How special has Georgia Tech's season been this year? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.